Hello and welcome back to the channel. You may remember quite some time ago there was a photograph of Stacy lying on the bed next to an enormous solar panel. Well today, a few months later, we're going to fit it and I'm going to show you how I'm going to do it. So let's take a wander out to the van first of all. It's quite windy here today so I do hope that you can hear me. I've got the separate audio attached um, but if not I'll put subtitles or something on. Hi folks, unfortunately after this point the wind got the better of the audio so I'm just going to take the video files and narrate over the top of them. Hope that this is okay with you all. This is my first time installing any type of solar panel and this install is a little unusual for a caravan as panels of this size are rarely fitted to caravans therefore some of the challenges that I face with regards to getting the panel onto the roof won't be applicable when installing smaller panels. Looking into the back of the van, you can see the solar panel that we bought. It came as part of a kit from the retailer Sunshine Solar. The panel is a 330 watt monocrystalline photovoltaic solar panel with a PERC backing, meaning that it can utilize more of the available light. It's approximately 1.7 meters long by one meter wide and weighs 18.7 kilograms. The size and weight of the panel made handling it difficult and I knew that the more times I moved it, the greater the likelihood of it getting damaged. However, I needed to decide where it could go on the caravan roof. I'd taken some rough measurements before buying it, but you never ex know exactly how these things are going to fit until you get them up there. To help me locate the ideal position on the caravan roof, I built a wooden frame that was the same size as the panel. The frame was a lot lighter and easier to handle, which enabled me to fiddle about with where the panel could be placed on the roof. I'd also intended to use the frame to help me with the initial install of the foot pack that supports the panel, but this didn't work out as planned. What I was trying to avoid more than anything else is falling off a ladder. Despite my careful and considered measurements, I did not manage to get the wooden frame cut and built accurately enough so that it could just be a direct substitution when installing the foot packs. During a trial fit, we discovered a difference of between three and four millimeters between how the panel fit in the foot packs and then how the wooden frame fitted. Whilst this difference was not a lot, I was reluctant to fix the foot pack to the caravan roof using adhesive, only to then find that they were located wrongly when fitting the panel. From experience, I know how well the adhesive I was planning to use sets once cured, and it is a real bugger to remove. In any event, the timber frame was useful in helping me to decide where the panel should be located on the caravan roof. Ultimately, despite trying the panel in a number of different locations on the roof, the only place it could go was the rear of the caravan. Ideally, I'd have liked to have located the panel over the axle for stability whilst towing. However, without removing the roof light, this would not be possible. To try and make the panel square with the edges of the caravan, I took measurements from the awning rail inwards to the foot pack and made sure that these were approximately the same between front and back. I then drew around the feet so that I knew the areas that must be cleaned thoroughly to ensure good adhesion. To clean the moss and lichen from the caravan roof, I used white spirit on an old rag. Some of the lichen was really tough to remove, so I changed the old rag to a scouring sponge from the kitchen before then stepping up to a fine grit sandpaper to work on the really stained areas. I probably wouldn't recommend using the sandpaper on newer caravans, but if you have an old knacker like mine with poor paintwork, then you may want to consider it. You'll notice that the roof area by the bathroom skylight is particularly mucky. I wanted to clean inwards of this area as once the panel is in place, it would restrict my access to this area. As you can see, the roof color hasn't been fully restored, but I am happy that enough moss, lichen and old paint has been removed to ensure good adhesion. It's important to clean off the white spirit using methylated spirits before applying the adhesive, otherwise a greasiness will remain and the bond between the two will be poor. I didn't fit the panel on the same day as rain was forecast. The roof will need another wipe of methylated spirits or rubbing alcohol just before fitting the panel feet. Also, you'll have seen me lying on the caravan roof during this video. This is generally not recommended, especially on older caravans. Do so only at your own risk. If you must climb atop your caravan roof, try to spread your weight as best you can across the roof and avoid putting all your weight onto a concentrated area. 
So here we are, back at the caravan on another new day. It rained heavily the night before, so I am just removing the excess rainwater using a squeegee and an old towel before I do anything else to give the roof the maximum length of time to dry off. Meanwhile, I got on to removing the feet from the timber frame so that I could attach them to the panel. You'll notice that the feet have been pre-drilled by me, which makes life a bit easier when fitting them both to the panel and the roof later on. I used the plastic feet as a jig to help me to drill the panel in the correct place. The outer frame of the panel was surprisingly hard to drill. It was either that or my cheap drill bits, you take your pick. I used roofing screws to secure the panel to the feet as well as to fix the feet to the caravan roof. Hopping back onto the roof, I gave the whole area a quick clean down with rubbing alcohol to remove any final traces of grease or oiliness. Methylated spirits would also have done, but we had the rubbing alcohol so used it. Just before lifting the panel up, I made sure that I would be able to reach the cabling by taping it into an accessible position. You'll notice here that I have also attached the feet along the sides of the panel. This didn't work out as you'll see in a moment. Three of us lifted the panel up onto the roof and then discovered that the roof at the back wasn't as flat as I'd thought. This had been a complete oversight on my part. Had I attached the central feet to the timber frame earlier, then I'd have more clearly seen this issue beforehand. However, it mattered not, as the error resulted in us finding an easier method of installing the panel. After removing the side feet from the panel, we used them as chocks to hold the four corners of the panel up from the roof. This allowed me to remove the corner feet, clean them, add the adhesive, then reattach them to the corners of the solar panel. This meant that we were able to lower the panel down in one go. It's, it's funny how sometimes you find the best methods only after finding errors. Had the entire roof surface had been flat, it still would have been easier to have chocked the panel up on, say, timber battens, put adhesive on all the feet, and then carefully lower the panel into position in one go. If you're wondering, the adhesive that we used was Seekflex EBT Plus. It's a three-in-one adhesive, sealant, and gap filler. And once it is taken hold, the bond it creates is incredibly difficult to break. Interestingly, there's actually no solvent for it once cured. It can only be removed mechanically. We used Seekerflex EBT Plus extensively during the front end rebuild of our caravan, and it truly is fantastic stuff. Once the panel was lowered onto the caravan roof, we drove the roofing screws into the pre-drilled panel, as well as down into the caravan roof to prevent movement. Most of the fixings down into the roof didn't really take hold of anything, but their main purpose was to prevent the panel slipping whilst the adhesive cured. A few days passed, which allowed the adhesive to fully cure. Despite it being late May, day and nighttime temperatures had not been that high, so I wanted to allow plenty of time for curing to take place. This also allowed me time to come up with a bit of a plan for new side brackets. In the end, we decided to make use of aluminium angle, which I was able to get at B&Q with dimensions of 50mm height by 30mm width, which was nearly perfect for the new side brackets. I was able to pick up the same holes that I drilled in the solar panel previously by locating them on a cardboard template, meaning that I did not have to drill any more. The process for installing these was far easier than the corner feet had been, as the panel was already locked in place. Incidentally, you'll notice me using a telescopic ladder, and I would like to announce that these are absolutely fantastic for caravan work, as they collapse down easily, have rubber feet at the top which don't mark the bodywork, and are generally just an excellent buy. Highly recommended. Next, I moved on to working out how to get the cables from the panel at the back of the caravan toward the battery in the front of the caravan. Normally, smaller solar panels are installed on the roof near the battery to minimise cable travel. However, I'd have a couple of metres of cable run to deal with. So I had a few options. Number one was to run the cable along the roof and down into the caravan nearer the front of the caravan. Number two was to run it to the side of the caravan and then directly down through the wardrobe, under the floor, and along the underside of the floor and back up into the caravan. Given that I wanted to install the charge controller nearer the front of the caravan, above the shelving, it made more sense to me at the time to install conduit along the roof. Perhaps installing it under the floor would have been easier had side access been better, but who knows. 
I used an offcut of timber batten to give me lines that were square to the edge of the caravan as well as to the roof light. It was then a matter of running the conduit and installing saddle clips where required along the line. A 20mm hole was drilled into the roof to allow for cable entry. I had drilled it from inside the caravan first to get the correct location though. I also decided to bring the cabling together into a waterproof junction box which I had to dash out and buy. The reason for this is that the tails from the underside of the solar panel were quite long with large black plugs on them. These would not slide into the 20mm conduit I bought, meaning that if I left them out they would flap about in the wind whilst driving and be weakened by UV light over time. Besides, keeping them in a junction box makes everything a lot tidier. I bought the biggest one I could find in the tool station catalogue and glued it to the roof. Where the cables pass through metal sheeting, particularly thin metal sheeting, there is a risk of the cable rubbing against it over time, wearing through the insulation and creating an electrical short. To prevent this, I used rubber grommets. I am still annoyed at how I installed this next bit. The solar panel came in kit form, which included this roof entry gland. Rather than buying another roof entry gland that was compatible with the 20mm conduit I had bought, I decided to cobble the two together. Worse still, I orientated the entry holes to the front of the caravan, meaning that they would be exposed to water being driven in whilst driving. Also, because the two were never designed to be fitted as one, I had to cobble together this T-piece and corner to make the entry holes match up. Ultimately, it was a right faff and the end result wasn't as clean looking as I'd hoped. After passing the cable down through the roof, I fitted the charge controller. I know that it doesn't look straight in this shot, but it is. The GoPro camera I film with has a fisheye lens which is great for wide angles, but does distort things. Next, I read that I had to power up the charge controller from the battery before attaching the solar panel, so I ran cabling to it. If you have sufficient spare from your solar panel cabling, you can use the same cabling. I didn't, so I used 6mm square earth cabling and just marked it up with electrical tape to show the polarity. This was run down from the charge controller along the walls, through the battery box and cut to length outside. After running the first length of cable, I should have gone back down its length and marked its polarity with tape in a number of different locations along its route. This only became a problem later when I installed an inline fuse between the charge controller and the battery and needed to know which was the positive. However, I will show you a workaround for finding that out later on. I cut the cable so that it was long enough to touch the ground. This, I felt, would always enable me to be able to put the battery on the floor without pulling on the cabling. I replaced the original terminal connectors with these new ones with three poles to connect to. This makes the wiring to the battery a lot neater. Back inside, power was now getting to the charge controller so I could make the connection from the panel. I'd advise checking the polarity using a multimeter before connecting the solar panel to the charge controller just to double check that you have them the right way around. The markings on the connector plugs on my panel featured a positive and negative symbol moulded into the plastic plug, but you will also see a red band around the stem of one of the plugs. On mine, this was the positive, though you could be forgiven for taking the moulded markings for positive and negative. Don't trust anything, take your multimeter and check. Now connected, you can see the flashing green light at the top of the unit telling me that it was sending charge to the battery. We'd been given a used inverter, which we are enormously grateful for given their cost. As the units themselves are fairly heavy, I thought that I would install it as far forward in our caravan as possible to offset the weight of the panel at the rear of the caravan. The task of installing an inverter isn't hard, but locating myself under the framework of our double bed is. However, I managed to drill another hole in the battery box for the cables to pass through and connected the inverter up to the battery. The inverter should be connected using a minimum of 25mm square cabling, but the provided length of negative cable was too short, so as a temporary measure to test the system I used 10mm square earth cable for the negative side. New cables for both the positive and negative sides have been ordered and will be fitted in due course. I am unlikely to exceed the cable rating as we are not planning to run any energy hungry appliances from our inverter, but safety first, the cables will be changed. There are plenty available on Amazon, eBay and other places. 
After making the connection to the battery, I switched the unit on and plugged in a light at Fox and the unit was working. I also installed a remote display monitor that I had ordered at the same time as I bought the solar panel kit. This was a bit of a pointless purchase as it sits right next to the charge controller and basically shows the same information. However, I had bought it thinking that I needed it to show information about the charge status, but never mind, I've installed it now. Realising that I had no fuses in the system gave me sleepless nights, so I ordered some inline fuse holders to take strip fuses. I hadn't ever used these before, but they're perfect for solar installs on leisure vehicles. I firstly wanted to install one between the charge controller and the battery on the positive lead, but given that I'd only marked each end of the positive lead, and that the two cables running side by side had the same outer insulation, I had no idea which polarity either was at the midway point. To find this out, I connected my multimeter to the positive end of the cable and pushed a pin through the outer insulation at the point where I wanted to install the inline fuse. I attached the other lead of the multimeter to the pin and tested for continuity. I was really lucky and found the positive lead on my second attempt. I then marked up the cables before I could forget. Installing the inline fuse is straightforward, you just make a break in the cable, remove a short piece of it, attach crimping lugs and put it all back together with the fuse in place. For good measure, you can check the continuity across the fuse to make sure that you haven't got a duff fuse. I then did the same between the solar panel and the charge controller. For these two, I have installed 30 amp fuses, but I have also ordered a mega 200 amp fuse to go between the inverter and the battery, though this has not yet arrived. For more information on fuse selection, take a look at 12 Volt Planet, which is an excellent resource for this type of work. In all, I am quite pleased with how the install has gone and look forward to saving money on site fees as well as being able to run computers and printers whilst on 12 volt power. This is my first step into solar PV and I imagine that there is a lot more to learn about batteries and other things. However, I will run with a setup I have for a while first before deciding whether or not to upgrade the leisure battery. Feel free to ask any questions in the comments below. Being a small channel, I am still able to reply to all of your comments and will do my best to help where I can. If you've enjoyed the videos, please give us a like. If you want to see more from us, then consider hitting subscribe. But until next time, cheerio from us.